Hi, this is James King. We can now install the time. The changing face of the cinema industry. Um, sorry, I just finished installing all the CRI systems for some people in Europe. Uh, I've got a few more to go, but uh, it's just before Christmas sale, so we're just going to let these also leave in the other uh, two later early next year. Uh, I just wanted to show you. One of the installs. Um, some of the theatre has biopompers all over, it's a very old theatre, so the biopompers are very separated, each one is separate. It's over the roof. Uh, this one is called Davis, it's on the floor. So I'll go through a bit of this equipment and now install it and uh, what's going on uh, in uh, this element of the cinema. Okay. This is a cube player. It's a player that's um, developed from India. Um, that's what we're mainly using in, this, in the Sun Theatre. But there are other players from Doremi and of course Dolby. Uh, just having a quick look at the, the button box as they call it. Um, you might be able to see that Australia is just about to finish. That's why I've got the light, keeping the light pretty low so I don't annoy any of the theatre goers. At the bottom we've got the amps of course. We've got the SDDS. Uh, we've got an e-cinema system that uh, we use also for automation control between the DCI and projector and the old Panologic automation, a traditional automation system up here. As you could hear, just a click then, that would have been the credits just starting, coming off the, off the player and it would have been going through, through the um, e-cinema system which uh, then passes it on to to the uh, old automation system, which only takes contact closures and serial. So we actually use the eCinema just to play eCinema as well as do all um, uh, handshaking or, or joining it up to the old automation systems. These eCinema systems actually have automation systems built into them as well. But you know, they can be master or slave in this sort of situation. Um, so on the back of a cube box, um, you mainly have or on any box, you mainly have um, some dual link HDSDI connections. Uh, you also have um, AES digital audio, and on the Cube case, that's quite nice. They also have analog audio out as well if you need it, which is common if you actually have these old processors, like we do here with the CP50. Was it CP55, as you can see there? Here we have the dual SDI cables coming in to the projector. As well we've got some HD, uh, DVI cables coming in, one from the e-server, e-cinema server, and one that we use for some DVD and Blu-ray occasionally. And here's the other important one, this is the Ethernet cable. This is where automation and, and mainly the security protocol from the player is transferred into the projector so it can decode the encoded content coming over the SDI cables. The cables actually do not carry encrypted content and um, only with a secure connection to the player will the actual content play on the screen. If this is not done, if the encryption message is not sent to the projector, you will only get a, like a white noisy signal on the screen. It's something you may see in the cinema in the future if something's gone wrong. This is the control box for the Christie ZX projector that's in front of me here for this theatre. It's basically used to do um, in bio box configurations, but really the web interface is where all the action is and where you do most of the control and set up your channels and um, all that sort of stuff. You can do it through here, but it's extremely difficult and lots of button pushes. Here we have a longer shot of the ZX end of the room so you can have a better look. As you can see, we've got the exhaust pipes coming off the ZX DCI projector and you still have the film projector sitting next to it. We're going to keep these in action for quite some time until we have DCI completely sorted out and also we can guarantee that we can get all the content that we require on DCI regularly from the, from the distributors. As you can see it's a bit of a squash in here. This is actually quite roomy compared to some of the other bio boxes. This is actually quite a big bio box 
compared to many you'll probably see in the cinema industry in a little cramped little project um, cinema lot like um, that you can find around. When content arrives, it usually arrives on some sort of storage device like a hard drive or USB drive or now, just recently, a new standard. Uh, just quickly, these are the USB ports or possibly eSATA port for a faster ingest. But most drives now, when coming from someone like Deluxe, actually come on these blanks here. This is a blank which came with the system. Um, as you can see, it slides straight out. And basically, the, the hard drive would be like this, and it, it would come with a special attachment on it, which allows you to put it into the USB if you need to. But if you have these newer models with the um, this drive bay here, you can just put it straight in. You turn it on by holding that button down, and then you can ingest it straight onto there. Also, you can basically play it off this drive in an emergency. For example, it does take quite some time to move a film, which may be 150 to 200 gigabytes, from the from the from the carrier drive to the internal drives. So, if you need to move to another cinema quickly, you can take one of these drives, plug it into a box, do it ingest in in spot or adjust in place. And then you can play it directly off these drives. It is not recommended because it's not as, as, as uh, you know, a possible a frame drop. I've never actually seen it do it, but um, uh, it is very possible uh, in case of emergencies and very well, very welcome or a, a development that's been very welcome in the cinema. It's like being able to move a piece of film. As you can see, there's no film in here at the moment because it's all going all VCI in here at the moment. But if you needed to, you could grab some film, walk to another theatre and play it straight away. This is basically giving you a similar sort of functionality which the cinemas really require. Here we have the automation system. Um, we run under Show 10 for DCI Scope. Basically, Show 10 sets up the theatre um, with this automation system through so the lights and the and the masking, etc. The curtains are all in the right place at the right time, and this basically sends messages uh, like a, a, a signal down to the cinema player here, and it basically goes through. It sets up the projector here, Christie channels, etc. The hours are closed open, so you can't see the channel switches, and then basically waits for triggers coming back from the DCI player, which then sends messages back to here to step to the next event in the program which then brings the lights to where it needs to be etc. This is how you deal with older type automation but in general in the future we're more likely to go for example this system has an automation system built into it as well and the advantage of this is um, this is all web based as well I can log into this from, from any, any place in the theatre or f from remotely and monitor the actual automation as well as the playback of the DCI player and the projector and that's really the future of doing a lot of debugging etc being able to do everything remotely. Now I'd like to talk about security. This is the main point to show you before but if, if there was a movie on this device that movie would be encrypted uh, and created with AES um, military grade encryption. So basically they're very secure. Now, when these drives come in, you also get the key that it sends you securely from the distributor. And basically, you need to get the drive and the key onto the system. And those keys and drives will match up. And once they do, you can pay back the content for the time allowed by the distributor. Um, now, how that works then is that that content is decoded on the payback box over there. Now, on that payback box, there is a uh, JPEG, uh, JPEG 2000 decoder, so it's the content is decoded because the JPEG 2000 um, uh, codec, which expands it back out to a fully HDSDI 2K image, then it is re encoded again in real time and sent over the HDSDI cables. That's why you need the need connection between the player and the projector. If that Ethernet connection goes down, which are travelling back and forwards to authenticate the uh, image, which happen periodically through the film, which will basically stop working because the key is there for it to decode. So it's 
very secure to experience all the time.